welcome to church at home. Week. Week. Five? No, four. Let's go for four. I think it's five. No, it's five. Okay, it's well, there you go. Let's four or five. Open with a prayer. Hi God, we just pray that this morning you'll help us to enjoy all that we've got planned um, and that everybody watching this at home has a great little time as well. Amen. Amen. Well, no more gimmicks no this gimmicks. week. Ready? Ready? Vicarage. Yeah, I can't say well. That's okay. Just leave it like that. The, the bakers have to bake something Christmas thing. Christmas! So I'm just melting my butter for my dough, um, which I'm going to add into my flour and I've got my yeast working there um, and I promise you I'm not cheating by having him here, he's actually um, less helpful and more destructive. Just putting together my dough. Joel's festive bake will consist of a dough ball Christmas tree with garlic, mozzarella on the inside and a tomato dip. I'm just making my dough. <laughs> Jessica's festive bake is a puff pastry filled with cinnamon, pecan and sugar paste shaped into the form of a Christmas tree topped with a star. It's never happens on the real Great British Bake Off, but the mixer's broken, so I'm gonna to have to knead the rest of this by hand, which will be fine. Fine enough, but fine. Ever the professional, the scales have now run out of the battery, so I've had to eyeball the dough into even 23 balls, which I'm now shaping into circles to place a ball of mozzarella in each one. So, it might work. We'll see. Ooh. Oh, it's stuck. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, building. <laughs> right, let's put this. I'm gonna have to pick one for Ezra. Yeah. I'm gonna go for that one first. So get an extra plate. <laughs> Look at the spaghetti. Oh no. I think it's cooked in the mid in the middle. I'm gonna get a little. Oh. No, this one doesn't look too bad. This one does look like more like a tree. This week's story is called The Christmas Eve Tree by Delia Huddy. A forest of Christmas trees stretching over the hills, that's where the story begins. Where the little fir tree was planted, but planted carelessly, 
so that when the wind blew strong, it fell sideways onto its neighbour and had no chance to grow. The years went by until one December, when the foresters dug up the trees for the Christmas market, the little fir tree, stunted and still tangled with its neighbour, was loaded onto a trailer and driven down the motorway to the city. Oh my, it said breathlessly, for it was at the bottom of the pile. The tallest trees were unroped and taken away. One stand proudly in a cathedral, another in the middle of a large square, and a third to decorate the stage at a grand Christmas ball. But most of the trees were bought by ordinary folk, for houses where there were children who covered them with stars and silver tinsel, chocolate mice, and small secret There's parcels. Red small secret parcels mm -hmm. were right there. The little fir tree and its companion were taken to a large store where late on Christmas Eve they were the only trees left unsold. A shopper hurried in to make a last minute purchase. You'll not want this weedy thing, miss, said the shop assistant as he pulled the little fir tree off from the roots of the bigger tree and threw it on one side. The customer smiled and went off pleased with her by, but the little fir tree felt fearful of what fate might be. There was a boy in the shop drawn in from the rain outside by the warmth and the lights and the wonderful spicy smell of Christmas. He said, you throw that away, could I have it? The assistant looked at the little fir tree Hardly what you'd call a tree at all. He shrugged and handed it over. After all, it was Christmas Eve and the store would soon be closing. The little boy went outside into the cheerless evening. He held the little fir tree carefully in front of him so that none of its few crooked branches would get snapped off by shoppers on the pavement. He set off on the long walk to the river. On his way, he found a cardboard box in a litter bin and took it along too. When he came to the river, the tide was out and down the steps a small pebbly beach was showing. The boy climbed down, digging the mud with his hands. He planted the little fir tree in the cardboard box. Near the steps, under the arches of the railway bridge, the boy had another cardboard box big enough to sleep in. He put the tree on the pavement in front of him. What a poor little thing I am, thought the little fir tree. But the boy seemed so pleased the little fir tree felt more cheerful. I belong to someone now, it said to itself, and it began to feel like Christmas. A passerby dropped a coin into the boy's lap. It was enough to buy him supper, but instead he crossed over to the newsagent and bought some candles and a box of matches. He fixed the candles to the branches of the little fir tree. Now the other people were returning to claim their cardboard boxes for the night. They gathered round the boy and the little fir tree, and an old busker with an accordion sat down, and soon the notes of the Christmas song blended with the heavy rumble of trains overhead. Everyone started to sing. More people gathered, home-going travellers, theatre-goers, sightseers. A policeman tried to move them on, but they stood where they were. The singing people and the traffic was brought to a halt. The candles burned steadily and the old man played the still people and still the people sang. The little fir tree felt it would burst with happiness for it was obvious the boy had forgotten that tonight he would be sleeping in a cardboard box under the railway arch and that tomorrow he would not eat turkey but soup in a soup kitchen if he was lucky. The magic of Christmas Eve was everywhere. A few days later, the boy moved on. You're more dead than alive, he said sadly to the little fir tree as he went. And the tree, feeling dry and brittle, had to agree. But while other Christmas trees were piled onto January bonfires, the little fir tree was put in a road sweeper's barrow. There's a green shoot here, said the road sweeper looking at the tree's roots, and he slyly parted it in the corner of the park gardens. There you will find it, not so little now, <coughs> for against all the odds it grew, if not big and tall, at least cheerfully stout. Now it stretches out its branches for sparrows, pigeons, 
babies in prams, lovers and office workers, mice nibble its roots. And as the winter days yeah, apparently so. And as the winter days shorten, the fir tree dreams of its poor beginnings in the hills, of that magical Christmas Eve, and of sunny days in the park. Who would have thought it said to itself, as it looks forward to another spring? I know it's not quite Christmas Eve, so reading the Christmas Eve tree might seem a funny thing to do. But along with that story and a lot of what we've done this week, um, there is some joy and hope to be had. Like the Christmas Eve tree, our Christmases and our Christmas Eve might be slightly different, um, but like you've seen um, in all of our little stunts and silly moments in church at home, um, we've made the most of um, what we've got around us um, and we've hopefully um, brought a little joy into your lives. Advent is the season of looking forward to the hope that is to come. And like that Christmas Eve tree, though we may not do everything we imagine, um, there is hope to be had in the birth of Jesus and there is hope um, of a spring that is to come, of a, a, an improved um, life that we will have hopefully in the new year. So hopefully the um, message uh, of the Christmas Eve tree will um, fill you with a little bit of hope of the spring that is coming. Uh, and I've said hope too many times, but really um, that is what we hope to have inspired in you this week. A little bit of hope. Well, it's time for prayers, and um, seeing as Christmas is all about baby Jesus, it leads perfectly for our first prayers. Yeah, we've got two friends who are giving birth uh, over the Christmas period, um, and we're just praying for their safety and that the babies um, are all delivered nicely in a perfect little bundle like this. Um, and that's baby, baby Cronin and baby Gibbs. Um, we just pray um, that the mums will be completely relaxed and stress-free about it all and the dads can be as helpful as possible. Yeah. Uh, and thank you prayers we've got as well. Thank you prayers, yeah. Well, Glenis um, messaged in to say she was really thankful for seeing her grandchildren go by in the car. They did a drive-by. Thank you, and, and uh, it's me, me, um, the other grand. You are the grandchildren, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the Webs uh, were really thankful. Their yeah. grandma had a successful operation and was able okay. to get out and about. Yeah. Um, and um, I think they were all of the prayers we had submitted this week, which is great. We love getting prayer we requests do, we do. submitted, and we'll carry on praying for those babies throughout um, Advent. Yeah. Um, and the baby is Boaz. Yeah. Oh, our baby is Boaz. Yeah. Our baby is Boaz, yeah. Um, He's fine. So pray for all of the week. Yeah. 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 No, I think that's it really. Okay. And how do we end prayers, Ezra? What do we say after yeah. prayers? Wait, I don't want him to have like that one. Oh. Ha. Ha. I get a little bit. They look awful, don't they? Um, um, right. Put in. Stick. Oh, that's not First, <laughs> the cheesy garlic Christmas tree bread. What's your opinion? You can dip it in if you want, yeah? Ketchup yeah, but what do you think of the bread and cheese and garlic? I can't really taste the cheese. Okay, the cheese is in the middle. Do you want to break it open? Break it open. 
cheeses. That one, this one had some. Yeah. Let's see. Your cheese. The cheesy bits in there. Try that. <laughs> Okay, say your final verdict till you've tried mummies. Yeah. So don't fill up on that, you've got mummies to go. Yeah. So what do you think of that? Just, you know? Mmm. Yeah, good. good. Okay, finish that mouth off. And sugar and pecans. You might want to like break it up a bit and taste the filling. Mmm. Mummy. Looks kind of delicious. It looks a little warm, warm. And a little bit of pasta. The way for Bake Off is... Mummy! Oh. Thank you! <laughs> so, a fun craft that you can do is decorate a Christmas tree with fun coloured wrappers. No idea where these are from, do you, Ezra? I know. Oh, well, but they're, they're from... Sweeties oh, and some. Have you been eating the sweeties? Because I haven't. No, I haven't. No. And these Enjoy are. Enjoy everybody. Some well done, you've made it to the end of another week. Yeah, we did the recipes. Although, my recommendation would be, because you're linking them down below, would be to make my recipe into like cinnamon rolls kind of thing. Don't do the Christmas tree shape. Yeah. It doesn't work. It's very difficult. And my recommendation with my recipe would be use a stronger cheese and then you'll Yeah, win. like a cheddar or something. Yeah. The mozzarella kind of was something and yeah. everything. Yeah, but other than that, they were pretty easy. Yeah, they were both very tasty. Yeah, great. Um, thanks for joining us again and we'll see you next week. Oh, are we going to say about the noisy Christmas book? Uh, yeah, next week we're reading a very noisy Spoiler Christmas. Spoiler alert. I know. Pips. We're Pips, Pips children and parents, because yeah. the children obviously know what the book is. Yeah, Pips parents, um, I think you should have a very noisy Christmas with you, um, which we're going to be reading next reading week. Next so if week, you want to so grab you it, a read you, along. Can, you can do a read along. How fun is that? I know, so exciting. Something different. Great. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs>